Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. My name is Greg Sykes. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. If you would like to, please consider subscribing to this channel. And when you do, hit that notification bell so you will never miss another video release here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. With that said, let's get into today's video. So let's set the stage here. So the season starts off, the first quarter of the season, the Washington Commanders <clears throat> are one and four. And then suddenly the team goes on this tear. Taylor Heineke comes in, and this was after that win, that close win against what I consider a very bad Chicago Bears team on that Thursday night after Carson Wentz gets hurt Taylor Heineke comes in and then suddenly the commanders roll off the, this what six and one run and suddenly the commanders are the hottest team in the league picture this the Washington commanders are up 10 to nothing against the, those Giants up there in New Jersey the Giants come storming back it ends in a tie all right at that point it seems like all the momentum that this team had just gets sucked out with that tie I mean the tie wasn't a loss but it wasn't a win they go to a bye week we're thinking everything is fine it's great we are even hearing thoughts of Chase Young possibly coming back we get to the next game against the Giants. It's a home game. Everything is laid out for these commanders. Beat the Giants. You're you're eight and five and one, and you're really sitting pretty. You're in the sixth seed. You're above the Giants. You've got a, a division win. Things are going great. And then you've got like, besides the 49ers, the rest of the games are all home games. So it's some clear selling for your, your team. And then you lose against the Giants at home. Luckily, though, for the Commanders, all the other teams that were hot on their trail also lost. Except for the Packers, I believe. But they still held on to that seventh seed. So... One last shot here. You're going to play against the Cleveland Browns, a team that has nothing to play for. They're a six and nine team. You let this six and nine team beat up on you the entire game. And also you decide to put Carson Wentz back in. We should have yanked Carson Wentz as soon as we saw that second INT. He should have put his ball cap on and called it a day at that point. Ron Rivera stuck with him. Carson Wentz had his worst game of his career. The Washington Commanders lost 24 to 10 to those Cleveland Browns. In the press conference after the game, Ron Rivera was taken by surprise. He was shocked that they could be eliminated if the Green Bay Packers won against the Minnesota Vikings at the four o'clock game. He's like, really? Well, as it went, the Green Bay Packers dismantled the Minnesota Vikings 41 to 17, thus eliminating the Washington Commanders from the playoffs. So many chances that this team had this year to win football games, to make the playoffs, this team has so much talent, wasted talent in my opinion. I really think that J.P. Finley says it the best, and he can say it much better than I can. Let's listen. It, folks are angry out here. They, it, it's not depressed. People are angry. People are mad. People are screaming at me to make sure I tell it straight, and you got to tell it straight. This is the type of loss that in a strong organization, everything is on the table following this. You, you, you may have to completely clean house after a loss like this uh, against a team that is already eliminated from the playoffs that just 
wins this game from start to finish. You make a change at quarterback. Listen, Heineke ain't Joe Namath, all right? But they were competitive. You, you go to Carson Wentz, who looks god-awful in the first quarter. Two first-half interceptions. Zero spark. I, I, I don't know the final numbers because I had to run down here, but they were on path for their worst offensive performance since week six, yeah. which I don't think coincidentally was also Carson Wentz's last start. It was. So, so just making that decision, making that decision to go from Heineke to Wentz, somebody's got to own that, and that's somebody's Ron Rivera. And, and then yeah. you, you can criticize a billion other things, both coordinators. I, I, Scott tried to establish the run. I mean, Robinson got the ball a ton. Clearly, he's banged up. You got Jonathan Williams getting the first series of the game. I don't know what that's about. It, Clearly, Robinson's not all the way healthy. He more or less told me that. You can see it in his running. This offensive line, I, I hate that I keep going back to this. It, please let me know. I, I would love for somebody to put their left hand up and let me know who decided to let Brandon Sheriff walk for this collection of dudes. I, I mean, Trent Williams, gone. Brandon Sheriff, gone. You know where those guys are going? Canton. You know where no. this group's going? Fishing when the playoffs start. I, I, it, it, it's a complete lack of accountability from the top down. Yeah. And if this was a strong organization, ownership would be looking at a complete review of everything they have. But this isn't a strong organization, and we have no idea what ownership is doing. And if I had to guess, probably nothing, because the sale is coming. And you know what you're not going to do with the sale coming? You're not going to fire a bunch of people that you're going to pay out their contracts. So The other thing that J.P. Finley touched upon is the, the change with ownership. Um, this owner, Dan Steiner, he's not going to want to have to, uh, you know, pay out any salaries and fire everybody. So, uh, and the new owner may not. And the thing is, uh, new ownership probably won't get fully approved until March when the new league, league year starts, which means that really you have no choice but to keep this current coaching staff and everything for at least one year. It reminds me of Norv Turner. Awful, awful much like Norv Turner. Norv Turner, uh, for those who are too young to have witnessed the Norv Turner days, it's very similar. Norv Turner, after a really rough, rocky bearing start to his head coaching career in Washington, he eventually got the team to kind of a respectable state. I mean, like, we had some decent players. I remember one year the team was like 8-1, and one, and we felt, man, this team is going to the Super Bowl. I mean, the team was 8-1. and one. They were just winning games like crazy, and then all of a sudden they lost seven straight games and wound up missing the playoffs and this was eerily similar to that season most coaching staffs don't make it when they have a total collapse like that uh, Rivera will probably escape because of change in ownership most of the time they don't and it's very likely that when the new owner does come in Rivera is going to be on borrowed time. It's just going to be until, you know, the new owner can get established and then eventually get his own people in there. And likely, um, you're looking at a lean duck head coach anyway. Honestly, Rivera would have to take the team to the deep in the playoffs, if not the Super Bowl, probably, in order for him to be safe with his job next season. No quarterback, no offensive line, no more than seven wins a season. What has Ron Rivera really accomplished here in Washington? Other than changing the culture, you know, within the locker rooms, within the franchise, maybe. i will give him that. I think the culture has changed. It's gotten back to being more of a, a professionally run organization. But other than that, as far as the product on the field, it's the same thing we have seen. You know, honestly, it wasn't much different from Jay Gruden. You know, at least with Jay Gruden, we scored points. Hit the like button on it. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I know all of you Washington fans are just feeling like you have a bad hangover today. I understand. Heading into the offseason, we'll start talking about the offseason, looking at 
draft prospects. And uh, with that said, uh, thank you for joining us, and we will see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.